the 2024 homeowners meeting. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this year. We, we still need to present a budget to the board and have the board go over the budget before we hand it out to the uh, homeowners at large. That will happen. Deanna and I should have a budget to present to the board somewhere around September 1st. And then that, that will all be done by email to uh, send out to the homeowners so that you guys can take a look at the budget and question, ask, question and answer session uh, before you guys vote on the, on the 2025 budget. Before we get into that, uh, I've got a little bit of an introduction here that I, I felt like instead of just winging it, I'd probably write it down. So uh, 10 years ago, I was hired to the ranch here for a different version or vision. It was more a hospitality based, moving away from a primary working ranch environment. I believe I fulfilled that vision. Uh, the, of what was asked of me when I came here to the ranch, what everybody kind of wanted to see the, the ranch grow into. Now comes maintaining the or a standard. We'll continue to operate in the most sustainable ways for you to get the most out of your ranch that I and other staff are blessed to share with you. I found that this summer, I'm not as young or as tough as I think I am uh, and I paid the price, uh, just physically. I've had to come to the conclusion that I can't do everything anymore as much as it pains me. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning that I need to delegate more uh, and, and ask for more help as we go along. Um, I've made some changes to the way we operate, all with the goals of keeping a safe, financially responsible, friendly, and beautiful ranch for us all to use. I look forward to what the next 10 years of my time on this ranch will bring. Uh, and with that, I'm going to have Tyler come over here and just speak for uh, a minute, maybe about the cows, uh, kind of what him and Flying Diamond think, and how we're operating. You can just hold on to that. It's just a microphone. Hey, guys. I'm Tyler. Um, I've been a ranch manager with the Flying Diamond for about five years now. It's been a good journey with them. Uh, you know, getting this lease on the Maytag with you guys has been really nice. You guys have a great ranch here and a lot of grass, uh, which is why we decided to change the AI protocol to Maytag this year. Um, we had a good breed up for the last four work days and um, had a lot of help from the owners and that was really nice. TJ and Cody and Bucky helped a lot. Um, so yeah, we're hoping to have a really good breed up percentage and, and a great finish to the year. And looking forward to the future with you guys. Thanks for having us. Does anybody have any questions for Flying Diamond? Or Tyler? Yep. What's the future look like? Uh, not much different. Um, you know, I think about the same about what we're doing. Maybe a couple more head, but yeah, just keep the AI breeding and get, you know, come up with more grazing plans, more firm grazing plans and how to better the ranch grass wise and yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, we do have uh, two new owners this year. Uh, we have Kim and Jim Arnold and John and Kelly Tepper. Um, I don't think that they are on the meeting, but they may look at the recording, and I just wanted to extend a welcome to them. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the website. Um, all owners have their own login. If you have not set up your login, please email me, and we'll get you set up. The dashboard and latest news will show you upcoming events and information needed for those events. You will find owner contact information under each lot in the owner section of the website. Please send me a picture of you and your family, preferably on the ranch, um, so that we can display it there. It's always nice for new owners to be able to go, who were the Simmons? Oh yeah, there they are, they look great. <laughs> um, so it's a great way to learn f new faces and get to know each other better. Um, under reports, you will find the financial reports. 
building milestones, and ranch and cattle reports. The financial reports come out monthly, and the building and milestone um, is just kind of personal per lot. And uh, the DRC tries to keep me informed on where people are at in their milestones, and I do try to keep that updated. Um, and then ranch and cattle reports, those usually come out annually when we get the uh, lease and all of that figured out for the year. Asset inventory is a list of ranch owned equipment and vehicles. There are details listed like purchase date, price, all the information. These are your items. They are your equipment and vehicles. And so I wanted to have them up there so that you could see what you have and what you know, why it's costing so much in vehicle maintenance or whatever. You can see, well, we have all this equipment and it needs to be maintained. The ranch cams, the only camera that's working at this time is TJ's house. We've just had a lot of trouble with the cookhouse um, camera. It's in a very difficult location to reach and then the box that runs it is in another difficult location and it's not something that like I can go and reset. I always have to have somebody do it. Um, and it just, so we're gonna think about moving that to a new location and, and that'll come up sometime in the winter, probably after January. But the seven day uh, time lapse for TJ's house are working and it does give you a great, um, it does give you a, a great show of the weather. Um, okay, the calendars, there are three calendars available for your convenience. The booking calendar obviously shows all the bookings in the cabins and the cookhouse. If you want to use the cookhouse for more of an event where you're bringing in people off the ranch, there is a cleaning up fee and then we'll block out that time for you. Um, otherwise, if it's just a family gathering and you don't mind other owners showing up or you're having an event that you're inviting a lot of owners to, um, there's a cleanup sheet uh, on the refrigerator that you can use to just clean up for yourself and we don't charge a fee for those and we don't put them on the calendar. But typically if you put it on the calendar, there is going to be a cleaning fee associated. Um, we can talk about that. Uh, the housekeeping calendar is primarily for Virginia's schedule and uh, but you may wanna look at it. Uh, that's why I left it open for everyone to see. Um, that's when she's coming in to clean the cabins and the cookhouse and the office and the lounge. The hunting and fishing calendar uh, shows you uh, the owners who have uh, the hunting scheduled for the whole year. It's, it's put up in early year part of the year because they figure that out in the fall. And then the fishing um, is for the lease section of the Arkansas River and uh, Royal Gorge Anglers has access to that calendar and they populate it themselves for their trips. So it's very handy if you're planning on going down there and you just want to make sure that uh, Royal Gorge Anglers isn't down there, you can look at the calendar. They should populate it for themselves. Um, at the top of the of every page, there's a booking um, request that just goes directly to me about booking a cabin. There's a fishing request that will, then I will populate the uh, fishing calendar based on your uh, desired fishing time on the river. Um, and then there is a tab for TJ and you can use that tab to to, to talk to TJ directly about just about anything. If there's something you see on your cameras at your house and you need them to run over and check on it, you can fire one off there. Um, anything that you need have done, um, that's, that goes directly to TJ. Policies and fees. Um, policies is the location where the existing HOA documents and ranch rules, plat maps, and design guidelines can be found um, and the current year's budget. Um, as the uh, documents are being upgraded, this will all change. Um, they will direct me how they want their new documents presented, and we will uh, make that section um, updated when we have the new documents. The fees section is a great place to see where your fees um, for the ranch added 
added fees on your bill, they are all there. And um, let's see. Yeah, it shows up on your quarterly invoice. There are a number of updated fees starting October 1st. So uh, fees, the fees schedule changes on October 1st because those fees are put on the January 1 um, bill. And so there's that quarterly overlap in income um, that cancels out with the expense. It, 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 it's just how it's always worked bookkeeping wise and to change that would cost us money. Um, so it, it's just a way I've always done it. Um, the board and committee section, the board members and offices are listed here as well as their terms. Upcoming board meeting agendas and meeting minutes can be found there as well. The committee section is a work in progress at this point. Because we are a dashboard, I can't just take a page down. And I put a lot of work on Kenny uh, to make it so that I can go into each individual owner and check a box saying that they're on a committee. So until we have the names of the actual moving forward committees and the actual moving forward members of the committees, just use this as, uh, a, like I said, a work in progress. It's not necessarily the way that uh, I think the board and um, the documents are going to be moving forward and I will make those changes once I have firm uh, information. Um, okay, so that's my presentation on the website. Are there any questions? I would, I would like to, I wish I could take it down, but I had, it's, it's a dashboard. It's not just pages on a website. I can't just make that page not show up. It's in, it's heavily, um, programmed within the whole structure. So if we could just ignore it, and I'll, I'll even try to put a banner on that page that says work in progress, this is going to be updating. Um, and then as soon as I get more firm information, I'll be sure and update that right away. Um, okay, thank you, great. Teresa, and you're right. I, I have kind of let that go this year. It's just been a crazy year, but um, I will go and check that again, and yeah, I'm hoping that the design review committee will be a little more active in giving me updates, because I have to go find the updates myself, and it takes time, but I will get into yours and update, and I'm going to go through every one and, and, and try to update to the best of my knowledge, because at least as far as the deposits and the returns, obviously I do know about that, so... I should be updating that. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. I know that's one area of the website that I've let fall because I've been just so putting so much of my website time somewhere else, but you're right. And it is me that, so please reach out anytime you see anything and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. Okay, my next subject is um, the lost and found. So a lot of times we find things in the cabins and if we know right away that they belong to someone, I always try to reach out and tell people that you left something in the cabin. But uh, sometimes things get left in drawers or something in it and, it and it's not found for you know quite a few owners to have come in and out of the cabins. Um, and the lost and found is starting to really build up in the office. So I've decided that um, at the end of each calendar year, I'm going to take whatever is in the lost and found to Goodwill. So if you think you've misplaced something or you're looking for something, um, please check the office um, for that. And TJ knows where it is and I know where it is. Um, and... Otherwise, I'm going to take all of that at the end of the year to Goodwill. Okay, so the next thing is the cabin checkout sheets. On the refrigerator in the cabins is a checkout sheet. We um, only have about 50% compliance on this. Um, the reason, the, I just want to uh, emphasize that the reason we have these checkout sheets is that we all agreed that... Um, the fees were going to be on the honor system that people would let me know if they rented a ranger or if they had five people at the lunch ride or, um, you know, if they, if they used one of the, um, and that's more for an individual at your house, used a propane tank. It's supposed to be 
uh, on the honor system that you let me know. And those sheets are for your convenience in the cabin and for your guests to use in the cabin. Um, and they let me know what happened during the week because I am not as actively uh, participating with all of you weekly. I'm at a computer all, all day. Um, so it's hard for me to know what's actually happening out on the ranch. Um, so if we could please try to start using those and filling those out at the end of each cabin stay, I would really appreciate it. Um, the merchandise. Currently we have hats for sale in the office. We also are on the honor system when it comes to purchasing hats. A post-it note on my keyboard is great. A little note in the um, envelope's fine. If you just want to put your cash in there, you know, I can pretty much calculate that if there's $25 in there that a hat was bought. <laughs> um, so, yeah, don't need to know, but um, I just put that down as a miscellaneous customer. Um, but we're on the honor system for the purchase of hats. Uh, if you would like to order an Ariat shirt, um, TJ is going to place those orders on the 20th of every month. So if you can just email him and let him know size and color of the shirts that you want, he will order them and then I take them in to get them embroidered and then um, I will contact you when they're ready. Um, it's something we're still working out all the details on, but I thought it was a good uh, suggestion that he would just order um, on the 20th of each month to help out. And then uh, um, lastly, I just wanted to announce that the round robin will start on October 15th. Um, and so right, right before the October board meeting, I'll send out my typical email um, requesting your round one um, options. So I just wanted to let you start thinking about what you want to do next year and um, be ready for that to come out on October 15th. All right. Uh, so let me go over some general guidelines. Th this is kind of stuff that we all know that this isn't necessarily declarations or rules. It's just kind of things of how we operate to, to make life a little bit easier here on the ranch. Uh, mail mail uh, all of our packages and, and stuff like that. Obviously, there's times that I don't get to the mailbox. Uh, I have plenty of keys for everybody that's here on the ranch. Uh, if you need more keys, I've got plenty of keys. If you're driving by and you see the padlocks locked, it, it's very helpful to uh, Cody and myself for people just grab stuff out of the mailbox or, or bring it in. Um, the post office, they, I, I try to get up there every day uh, by 11 o'clock, but sometimes, sometimes I don't miss it, make it, and then they just hold the packages for the next day and the next day and the next day. So all your, all your packages are in the office. If you are going to be gone on an extended leave for our homeowners that have homes, uh, you know, send me a text or something. I'm, I'm, I'll start putting all of your stuff kind of over in the corner of the office and it can just kind of pile up and that way when you come to the ranch uh, you, you can you can kind of dig through all the ex all the other packages that are over there uh, instead of something coming in it sitting on the table for you know a week or two uh, it just makes our lives a little bit easier bless you uh, propane tanks so this year we we put a wet leg on one of our propane tanks uh, so it's exceptionally cheaper to exchange out the propane tanks. I think we're at 10 or $15, uh, whereas if you take it to town, they're almost $30. And I fill them all the way up. Yeah, so you're, you're getting a little more bang for your buck. Uh, you guys all know where I park my truck. Uh, the, the propane tanks, when they're empty, if you could just set them next to uh, my, my truck up there, and then the full ones are right on the side of my garage. Uh, so it, it makes it very simple. Instead of me trying to cart propane tanks around, if I see them sitting there uh, by the propane tank, it's really easy for me to go fill them up in the evening. Uh, it, it only takes me a few minutes. So just kind of making things a little bit easier for everybody. Uh, Ranger rental uh, and liability. So. This is, this is going to kind of 
bridge into another subject, but uh, Rangers, we when you guys want to rent Rangers, it's it's great. We want you to get a hold of me because every time you rent a Ranger, I want to go through it, make sure the tires are properly inflated, make sure it's got oil, make sure it's in good mechanical uh, condition before I hand it over to you. Uh, when you are here on the ranch working with me, we just use the equipment as we use them. If you want to rent them for the week uh, to take them out or give them to family members or things like that, it's absolutely fine. Once you rent the Ranger, it is 100% your responsibility. That being said, it means at the end of the week when you turn that into us, it needs to be in the condition that we handed it over to you or you will be billed uh, the, the cost to get it back to it, its operating condition. Uh, not that we've had problems that we need to address or anything like that, but uh, all the ranch equipment is like that. So if you need to borrow the tractor, great, borrow the tractor. If you need to borrow a truck or a trailer or anything else, this is your equipment. You guys own this, but it, when it comes back to the association, the association can't be responsible for fixing any damage that was that that happened while you were using it, because uh, everybody else isn't responsible for that. Now, obviously, a flat tire is not something we're worried about you taking care of. And yes, I don't know. that that goes into the second part of this is liability. Liability. So you as owners assume 100% liability for yourselves and anyone you bring on the ranch. Yes, we have insurance. Uh, Is there but yes, the Rangers are insured for liability. Uh, uh, the equipment is not insured. Uh, tractors. There's. We, you know. We just. We're not going to go down the road of trying to insure tractors and, and plows and discs and, and things like that. So yep, but no, it's, it's good questions. So w let, me, let me go from my own personal experience. When, we, when I have friends, family, or Ashley has friends and family come on the ranch, they all sign the release form. Uh, we, you'll, if you want to look in the office, you can see that Ashley has signed the release form for both of our boys. The only people that do not sign a release form on this ranch are staff. Otherwise, they come in, they need to be, they need to sign that release form and they need to understand, owners need to understand, you are responsible for your guests, uh, as in, insurance wise and things like that. The ranch is a dangerous place, uh, and it is easy to get hurt. Um, knock on wood. Uh, we, have, we have not had uh, a great number of injuries, and, and our work comp is, is I'm, I'm pretty happy to not have any claims in, for several years now. Uh, but the ranch is a dangerous place. So it, I, I think that's a... a a strong point that I need to make, and if I don't know that I, I think believe the board members will agree uh, that we have tried to set the ranch up so that when you bring guests on the ranch, you are responsible for their safety. You are responsible to indemnify the ranch for any damages or injuries or anything that may occur because of your guests. Any questions with that? Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, the gun range. The gun range, we've had very successful usage of the gun range. No accidents, no injuries, uh, no problems uh, to speak of. Uh, my, my only ask is that we continue to be very respectful of it. Um, if I... I have a fear that if we ha ever have an accident or an injury, it will go away. So uh, it's one of those things that I harp pretty hard on about the rules. Um, you know, no alcohol, clean up, try to text as we're, as we're using it um, to, to inform everybody. Right now, 
uh, the way the summers kind of worked is we've set aside Monday mornings and Sunday mornings for just use of the gun range. I don't know that everybody has seen the whiteboard there at the office. Uh, even, even though we know the gun range is gonna be used, it's still nice to send me a text uh, so that I can tell everybody, hey, this is what's going on. The exceptions to that is if you guys wanted to go out and shoot clays, please go shoot clays, send me a text, but I'm not gonna tell everybody on the ranch that you know, we're shooting clays, there's a little bit of gunfire. Uh, just the, the mass texts that I send out, I know they are irksome uh, when everybody gets you know, 100 different replies. So when I do send out those mass texts, there's, there's not really much reason to reply or a thumbs up or whatever. The ranch, uh, we, we have about $1,000 in the budget each year for the gun range. That takes care of targets and uh, paint. Clays, ammunition, everything else associated with the gun range uh, is, comes out of my pocket, so I try to keep, the, keep it stocked. Uh, so please get a hold of me if you guys are out there shooting clays uh, or using ammunition and things like that. Um, like we haven't had a problem. Uh, it was just something that I wanted to reiterate to everyone. Horse riding. Uh, now that we have a lot of homes built and a lot of owners here on the ranch. Uh, this is gonna kind of dovetail into a little bit of the round robin thing, but obviously we want you guys riding horses. The more you guys ride horses, the better our horse herd is gonna be. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on, so if you can get me the day before or even earlier than that, we can definitely schedule you a ride um, how, however we need to however we need to do this. Uh, as we get more and more owners, uh, we're, we're obviously we're having more usage. Uh, they even, I, I won't, I'll, I'll use you just a little bit. Uh, I was very happy to uh, come home from a pack trip uh, on Thursday and, and the Andersons were up at the uh, corral uh, getting ready to go for a ride, and, and we're, we're, we're finally moving to a place in the ranch where I don't have to do everything, uh, and it's, it's, it's helping everything else out that we've got other staff around that can help do rides and, and help take care of other things for people. Uh, roads. We do have a 20-mile-an-hour speed limit on the roads. Uh, yes, I understand, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be out there with a radar gun or anything else like that. But we have had a great impact to our roads, especially our gravel roads. Um, what happens when you're moving fast on the gravel roads and then you start slowing down, it creates those washboards. Uh, so a couple of asks for you guys is please use the entire road. Uh, don't just stay in the middle. I know it's, it's it, I'm always in the middle of the road myself. But if you use the full road, what happens is the weeds don't grow into the road. And when the reed, weeds grow into the road, uh, it starts degrading the base. But those, those roots start degrading the base and all of a sudden the roads get narrower and narrower and narrower and they start falling apart. And then it's a, quite a bit of work for us to reclaim the edge of the road. So especially on the gravel roads, if you guys could, uh, as you're driving, try to, try to stay on or closer to the edges. Uh, it's gonna help with erosion. Uh, it's gonna help with grading. And that goes into more use again. When I first got here, uh, a set of blades would last us an entire year, sometimes two years. Now we're grading about four times a year um, and blades are about $170 a blade, uh, so two blades, and we'll go through two sets of blades a year, so that's four to six blades sometimes per year just to keep the gravel roads uh, so that you know, you're not losing fillings or spilling your coffee as you're driving down the gravel roads. Uh, and that just comes with more usage. You know, that, that's gonna be a, an overwhelming uh, topic over the coming years. Uh, and how we're dealing with the budget and how we're dealing with many things on the ranch. Just more people, more usage. Uh, 
So that moves on to snow plowing. Uh, we do everything we can to keep the roads open as best we can, as long as we can. Uh, I particularly like starting the snow plow about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I just find it really enjoyable to be out there in the dark in the snowstorm and listen to my book and plow on the roads. We try to get as much done as we can in a timely fashion. If you guys are here on the ranch during a big snowstorm and you have to get out the next morning, send me a text. We'll get to you first. Otherwise, what we do is we try to hit the back gate and then the front gate, and then we hit all the ancillary roads on the ranch. All right, so continuing on. Uh, so snow plowing, obviously, uh, and Brian's right here front and center. Uh, Brian has, has sent me a text before, hey, TJ, don't, don't go into my place. Uh, I, I'd rather the, the snow melt off than you push gravel around in windrows and then it takes a little bit to, uh, you know, for you guys to, to fix your driveways. The ranch assumes zero responsibility for any damage we do while we're snow plowing. So, uh, come the fall, you know, get a hold of me, whatever. I, I try to run around before we see the storm hit and take a look at everybody's driveway, kind of see what's where. Um, obviously, we've got pretty good carbide blades on our snow plows, so uh, I've, I've talked to several of you guys. You don't want me on your concrete because I'm going to scratch the hell out of the concrete if I plow right to your garage door. But we are happy to plow right to your garage door uh, and, and do whatever you want. So especially with more owners and new houses being built. Um, I will try to reach out to everybody before the storms hit to kind of see where uh, everything goes. Uh, hunting. We, we, the ranch encourages our owners to hunt. Um, there, there's been quite a few questions asked of me in recent years about doing a cull hunt. Um, the amount of deer we have on the ranch uh, are, are just overwhelming. They do a lot of damage to the trees and things like that. Um, we did a biological study with the Forest Service years and years and ago, and, and they basically said to me, DJ, kill as many deer as you want. You're not gonna affect the population here on the ranch. Obviously, that is uh, t a tongue-in-cheek thing. Yeah, you know, we don't wanna slaughter 100 deer, uh, but uh, as far as the hunting goes, we have September and October uh, that are the main hunting months. And one of the things that we ask is, is some of our owners, they bought here solely for the hunting. And so we ask everybody to kind of be respectful uh, a little bit more in the fall about you know, what's going on and who's hunting on the ranch. You can find that on the calendar or you can send me a text and kind of ask me what's going on even to the point to where one of, one of my favorite things here on the ranch beside the horses is the gun range. We try to even tone the gun range down as much as we can uh, during hunting season just to give our owners that are hunters the opportunity uh, to be able to get their game. It, no, it will, be, it will be rifle under my supervision per each animal taken. Oh, absolutely. Yes, the, it, there will be, everybody will know exactly what's going on uh, by the day. Just like uh, this early this uh, spring, we had, we had a pretty big coyote problem. Uh, and I grabbed as many owners as we could, and we got out there at 5 o'clock in the morning to take care of our coyote problem. Uh, we were marginally successful. Uh, but if, if we come across a depredation hunt, we will do it the same way. I will involve as many owners as I possibly can just to make it not so much work for me. Events uh, that are going to be happening uh, going forward. Um, poker starts November 16th, runs through middle of April. Uh, it is a very friendly game. I encourage everyone to come. Um, it, it, it's, it's a tournament style game. 
even if you're a novice, it's still fun to kind of hang out, gets, it, gets everybody together every other week, all winter long. Uh, our main poker game, our, our big game will happen at Christmas. Uh, it's actually on the 28th this year. So the ranch's Christmas party will be on the 28th of December. Uh, I hope as many of you can come as possible. Um, apple cider and horseradish processing. That's going to happen uh, end of September, uh, first part of October, somewhere in there. We try to send out as many emails as we can to, to get everybody involved in that as we can. It's, it's, if you haven't been, I suggest you come. Um, we, we open up some bottles of rum early in the morning, and then hopefully by noon, everybody goes home and takes a nap. So uh, let's see. Ranch Rodeo. Uh, we had a heck of a showing for the Ranch Rodeo this, this year. Uh, Cody, our, our hired man, he came in third place this year. Uh, so we were pretty proud of him. He is riding under the Maytag Ranch banner uh, and we plan on seeing that again this coming summer so uh, I don't have the dates yet I looked online we don't have the the summer dates yet for the ranch rodeo but uh, as spring comes around those dates will come up I hope to see as many of you guys as we can uh, and have our Maytag ranch team representing I will not be playing I will sit in the stands uh, this is the, the ranch rodeo at the main rodeo on Westcliff. Um, I am still trying to get a wine tasting, wine pairing, or whiskey tasting together. Um, I almost had one together this last winter, but uh, trying to get the wine here and everything set up, it ended up being $250 a plate, and I did not think that would be palatable to uh, do, so I, I nixed that idea. I'm, I'm still trying to source something local to get a winter wine pairing uh, with, with you know, a four or five course meal or a whiskey, or and or a whiskey pairing uh, together here in the cookhouse sometime during the winter months. Let's see, pack trip season starts middle of June and goes to the last week of August. Uh, the important thing about pack trips, uh, we, just, we just did a wonderful one, one that I, I consider about as easy of a ride as possible. I have been dissuaged from that notion, um, and that's, that's my own... Um, I've been in the saddle so many years, I don't think about novice riders sometimes. Not to say that I don't think about novice riders, I, I, I think that something is quite a bit easier than maybe other people might think about. Um, however, we do have a, a very pleasant, easy ride. Uh, it's about a four hour trip in, it's about a three hour trip out. Um, <laughs> One of the things that I'm going to ask is, if you haven't been on a pack trip before, we're happy to take you for a night. I want to get to the point to where we do pack trips on, on two night uh, minimums. It's a lot of work uh, to get up the mountain, get camp set up, get everybody comfortable, get meals cooked, and then pack everything up and get out again the next morning. Uh, so as we go forward, uh, I'm going to push more and more people to uh, move to that two-night paradigm. And that's going to bring me back to the round robin. The only way to do a pack trip is you've got to have a round robin pick. And we have to coordinate it with whoever else has the other round robin pick. Uh, that, and that's going to get easier and more difficult as we go on. The reason it's gonna get easier is because we're gonna have more and more weeks like we had this last week. We had two owners here that both had houses uh, and they didn't need a whole bunch of guest services. So we were able to do a two night pack trip without really impacting everybody. But when we have, and I'm just gonna, uh, if we have owners that don't have houses and they bring five people into one cabin and, and six people into the other cabin, 
now we have 11 people and, and trying to figure out scheduling there. Uh, we're working on it. The round robin is slowly kind of transforming into more staff priority than it is the cabin priority. It, it, it's always going to remain cabin priority. Um, this last week, the hearts, because they're sitting right here, I'll use them, they kept the staff priority. They gave up their cabin. Uh, and and they're the, we had some other owners come in and use the cabin uh, and use the ranch. Obviously, Cody and I were not available uh, for the times that we were in the mountains. We're going to see more and more of that, and we're going to ask the owners to communicate more among themselves, reach out to each other uh, as you look at the calendar, um, and talk amongst yourselves. Uh, and it's going to be more important as we go on. Um, the, the, the Simmonses and the Bakers might say, hey, let's, let's see if we can't get the cabins together so that we can get the staff's priority. And then the, the Simmons and the Bakers, you know, together can use the, the staff as they will to go off and do something and, and maybe not even need the cabin and then let other owners use, use the cabins as they will. Hopefully this is making sense. Yes, okay, good. Uh, any questions so far? That kind of does it for uh, events and general guidelines. Uh, the coming winter projects. So once we get to October, we start slowing down. We, uh, the, the ranch starts slowing down. It's, you guys that know me know that I don't idle well. Uh, but we, we try to kind of tone things down a little bit. Um, some of the big projects that we have planned this year, uh, we, we heard Tyler talk a little bit earlier about the cows and we're still working on the fencing and, and, and pastures and, and how we're making all this work. One of the big, uh, reclamation projects that I plan on doing this winter is from Cody's house to the Simmonses and Barwicks all the way to the Baker's. Uh, going in there, putting Lake Creek uh, back into its original stream, drying up some of that land, pulling out a bunch of those willows uh, so it's not no man's land, it's not just a swamp, and reclaiming a bunch of that grazing land that is just, it, it, it's practically unusable, uh, just the amount of silt that's come in there. That's going to be a pretty big project. Um, we're going to work on it as we can. I plan on remodeling the Mao master bathroom uh, this winter, going in and redoing the tile, just like as many of you have seen that we've done to the price cabin, uh, and going in and, and putting a bunch of time and effort into uh, the Mao cabin. When we do that, I'll have Deanna pull weeks off the calendar and, and shut the cabin down for maintenance. Um, we're going to be painting all of the ranch buildings. We're at year three again. Uh, so going into this fall all the way through the spring, every ranch building gets repainted. Those of you that enjoy that sort of thing. <laughs> Cody going to have his work cut out for it. So, um, we're also, uh, the willows right along Lake Creek and Cowboy Way. Uh, I know that we, we love to see the greenery. It's become a dangerous intersection. Uh, we're going to pull those willows back. I'm going to try not to expose uh, so much of the ranch to, to, to have headlight shining in houses and things like that. But Right there at Cowboy Way and Lake Creek at that turn, it's, it's really turned into a blind, danger, dangerous intersection. We're going we're gonna to go in and really thin those willows out this winter. Uh, along with stop signs, uh, that goes back to roads and speeds. Obviously, we have seen a lot of traffic on the ranch. When, who knows, uh, when we get through or once we get down to very little building going on. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to reset all the gate codes. Uh, it's coming. Uh, 
there's been a lot of access. Uh, as, as many of you guys know, I see a strange car, or I'll go chase down whoever it is. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of access to the ranch, and it's not that we, we've had necessary problems, um, but I wanna keep those problems from popping up. So sometime in the next couple of years, we're gonna be asking everybody to change gate codes. We're gonna reprogram all remotes uh, and go through this process. We are also looking at putting some sort of camera system on our front gate. Uh, not that I wanna track you guys, not that I care, you, you know, use the ranch as you will. It's more of a safety measure. We, we had one incident this, that happened this summer. It turned out to be a giant misunderstanding. Um, and, and, and it was no harm, no foul. But it, it, it put me uh, in a little bit different frame of mind. Uh, I won't go into the specifics of it. Uh, but just so you, that you guys know, it, it is coming in the coming years. Um, I am hoping that we will finish all of the two wire along all of our interior roads uh, this year. I know we, we still have some to do on Lake Creek. Um, that, then that will kind of hopefully finish out <coughs> all the two wire. All houses, <clears throat> Excuse me. All houses, I would like to put two wire around your house. If you don't want it, that is absolutely fine. Reach out to me. We will come up with a plan of how to fence your house. Uh, we, we have uh, heifers on the ranch. Heifers are a curious, curious young animal, and they like to go anywhere and do anything and, and look at everything. The, the better we can fence your house, and I understand nobody wants to see a fence, but the better we can fence your house, the better we can protect it. And then the last big project will be replacing the roof on my house. Depending on weather uh, and everything else, um, I, I plan on hopefully doing that this coming spring. I think that wraps it up. Uh, we'll open this up for any general comment or questions from the association.